and Eli Rabashkin, the immigrant bloke or something or activist or whatever, who assaulted and has admitted assaulting uh, Posey Parker, a.k.a. Kelly J. Keen Mitchell, in May in Albert Park in Auckland. In a really dark, that was a dark day for New Zealand, where 2,000 anti-woman activists who call themselves the trans movement or whatever and the pride movement were whipped into a frenzy by our news media and went and shouted and literally beat down a group of women who simply wanted to speak in a public place. Our police stood by and did nothing and Posey Parker was run out of town to the whoops of Slay by uh, the, her opponents. Uh, she was branded by our media a Nazi uh, and a white supremacist and anti-trans. And she is, as far as I can establish, a pro-woman activist. She wouldn't call herself a feminist. Uh, we are told by our politicians who don't want to get into the issue of transgenderism and because most of them are woke, national and labour, that this is an imported culture war and it's got nothing to do with us. And for some perspective on this issue, I thought it would be good to talk to someone who watches it on a, in a global sense. And a few people, and a few women in particular, have been talking to you, say you must talk to Helen, our next guest, Helen Joyce. Helen Joyce speaks sense, she's super smart, and she's a journalist. And I looked up to Helen Joyce and I saw her talking to Jordan, my old mate Jordan Peterson, and I thought, yeah, I've got to. And uh, it didn't take long. Well done, Ben. So Helen Joyce, Joyce uh, joins us from the UK by video link now. Helen, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Oh, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate the invitation. Yeah, and look, I did, of course, some research and I read your Wikipedia page. And because Wikipedia calls me a right-wing journalist, I don't always trust it. I want you to self-describe, and this is the great trend, yourself, because I know you're a super smart mathematician, you write for The Economist, and you've written some books, the uh, trans book, and is there a new book called What is a Woman? Out. No, 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 I've only written one book. They've, they've um, reissued it under a new title. Oh, OK. Um, so a little bit about me. Yeah, so I'm Irish. I live in the UK. Um, I worked at The Economist between 2005 and 2022, where I did a bunch of different jobs, most recently Britain editor. Uh, while I was there, I stumbled upon the fact that people were saying that man and woman weren't biological terms, they were identity terms, and this seemed a bit suspect to me, but, you know, at first I couldn't quite see why. And then the more I looked at it, the more I realised it's a huge problem for human rights when you don't def define specifically women's rights and children's mm. rights and gay people's rights when you don't define these things uh, in a reality-based way. So I wrote a book that came out two years ago called Trans When Ideology Meets Reality and it was recently reissued as Trans Gender Identity and the New Battle for Women's Rights. Okay, not... Uh, so yeah, that's yeah, the, that's the yeah. whistle stop tour. And now I just want to check, you're not a Nazi, you're not a white supremacist, you're not <laughs> last, a member of the Freemasons or the Illuminati. <laughs> Um, because anyone no, no, who I just care about people's yeah, human rights. Anyone who isn't on what I call the woke side of this debate tends to get, and, and Kelly J. King Mitchell is a perfect example, tends to get branded with those monikers, don't they? It is the standard response from people promoting what they would call trans tolerance. Yeah, it's not. It's funny, isn't it? The Be Kind crew are so notably horrible. Um, I mean, it's you know, it's people who say be kind, bitch, basically, uh, to people like Kelly J and myself. Um, you know, people saw who was being kind to whom, and who was shouting and screaming and masked and pushing. And you know, you you always can tell where the violence is coming from when you look to see which way the police are facing. They're never facing towards the women who are saying uh, women need to be able to self-describe for the purposes of women's rights. They're always facing towards the blokes and some women. I'm sorry to say who are trying to shout down women who stand Yeah, and that's what happened in Auckland so no, this Wednesday. Of those things. All the pictures in Auckland this Wednesday, yeah. uh, it was the trans supporters, and a lot of them seem young and a bit naive, to be honest, pushing towards a bunch of uh, women um, who were just standing in a public place say saying what they thought. We are told by our mainstream media, who have basically picked sides in this argument, oh, look, oh, oh, let me just go to that point, have mainstream or legacy media in most places picked the trans tolerant side or the trans promotion side, the transgender side in this argument? 
completely. I mean, especially the ones who are liberal or left wing or centrist. So the New York Times, for example, or here in the UK, The Guardian, you know, they take it as an article of faith that if you think that a man can't be a woman, that you're as bad as a racist or a white supremacist or an anti-Semite. Um, I would say we've got some better reporting here in the UK than in most other places. Some of the right-wing media, um, the Telegraph, the Times, the Daily Mail, have done some balanced stories. And I've been proud of my own old publication, The Economist, where I used to work. They've been pretty balanced and evidenced based on, based on this. But uh, on the whole, what, what's happened is the demonisation of anyone who thinks that biological sex is real, which is the oddest thing that I've ever seen in my lifetime. Yeah. Um New Zealand's a long way away from anywhere. Um, we're a bit, as a result, we're a bit, I don't know, sensitive about what people think of us and our place in the world. And as soon as you arrive here, people say, what do you think? You're having a good time. Um, our politicians and our media are saying that all this culture war is imported. It's got really got nothing to do with good old little New Zealand. Y you see us from a different They're perspective. Right. Uh, you know, do people notice what happened with Posey Parker back in Albert Park? Are we part of a global issue? I, I, two answers to that. Yes, we noticed. I was very upset the morning I woke up and saw those pictures of Posey in the videos because I know her personally and I also go to rallies like this and I also speak in public. And, you know, a woman is going to get seriously hurt or killed at one of these unless people start taking this seriously, this threat. But yes, the other thing I would say is that you are a part of a global situation and there is a culture war it's just not the one that they're describing this movement is exported from america it was created in um, east coast america the or east and west coast coastal america it's a it's a liberal american university types who created this idea that uh, there aren't two sexes that you are whatever sex you say you are and they're the ones who are exporting it and then when it lands somewhere and people say well look that ruins my rights you know a woman has no rights if she can't say no to men when she's undressing or in a private the place or you know mm. trying to do sports or something like that when we say look that doctrine of yours is destroying my rights that's when they call it a culture war well i think they're the ones who are causing the culture war by trying to impose this incredibly unpopular and unrealistic doctrine on the rest of us mm. now it hasn't been reported here i understand in toronto in the last uh, 24 48 hours a massive protest there about what about the teaching of this nonsense to children in schools. So, I mean, Canadian schools are insane, but it's not only them, it's happening here, it's happening in lots of American states, um, it's happening in Australia too, and I'm guessing it's probably happening in New Zealand, that children are being taught lies about what it is to be human. There are only two human sexes and you can't change your sex, and that's just a fact. Mm. Well, I'll, 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 I'll give you some news, well. a story I'm working on right now, a primary school in New Zealand for the first time has issued a policy, this is a primary school, so kids up to 11 or 12, that children will be disciplined for not using correct pronouns at primary schools. Uh, I think, and someone else is doing some legwork for this me, there is a company that writes cookie cutter policies for school boards in New Zealand, because they haven't got the expertise to do it. And they have apparently written them, this is what the policy should be. So we can expect to see the disciplining of primary age school children for not using the correct pronouns, that I imagine is going to be spread throughout our primary education system. So children are being lied to, they're being lied about, they're being misled, and that's having direct impact on them in that boys are being told it's okay to go into the girls' toilets if they identify as girls, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You can see all the ways in which this would cause problems and put children at risk. And worse still, when it's a teacher who identifies as a member of the opposite sex and the kids are supposed to go along with that. And uh, it's, so it's, it's very bad for all of the children in that it's destroying their, you know, their rights, their safety, their safeguarding. But it's also misleading children into thinking that you can change sex. And that's an idea that's attractive to a surprising number of mm. children, especially the ones who are unhappy or confused or depressed. Yeah. And so we're creating a social contagion. Canadian parents are starting to push back on this is what happened. Mm. Um. Look, it is a weird world we live in. I recently asked our Prime Minister what a woman was, and I don't know if you've seen his response, but it was quite inconclusive, I, I think would be the word I would use. I read it at the time. Remind me. Uh, I simply said to him, he said, um, uh, well, that wasn't a question, gender, um, biology. Um, I hadn't expected that question, Sean. Um, and it kind I of remember, went viral. and he said that he hadn't been briefed, didn't he? Hadn't he hadn't been briefed, hadn't been briefed <laughs> on that one. Um, 
Uh, and I'll tell you what, it caused a stir here and around the world. It showed me, and I, I, I looked in his eyes as he was doing that. He was terrified of giving the, the true answer because this lobby... The He's going to keep... Yeah, the transactivist lobby is, where do they get their power from, Helen? What is it that scares an otherwise rational man like Chris Hipkins into not being, being able to answer a simple question like that? I think people get, like, it's road to hell is paved with good intentions type thing. Like, people want to feel like they're good people. And, I mean, rightly, they aren't sexist, they aren't racist, you know, they aren't homophobic or whatever. And then they, they think that this is the next step in that. And they want to be good, so they go along with it. And then it's kind of too late when they notice that it's not like those other things at all. Like, to say that, you know, you shouldn't discriminate against women at work is nothing like saying you have to pretend that a man is a woman. And then when they're in too far, it turns out that these people are incredibly nasty because all they've got going for them, because they have no reality behind what they're saying at all, all they've got going for them is bullying. And so they go after you horribly. I mean, so many people's lives have been destroyed by this movement. You know, they, they try to get people out of their jobs. They Well, they do get they people out, out of their jobs. Who've lost their up. companies. Um, that's why yeah. the platform exists. I was essentially non person to my profession by by a campaign of whispers by woke corporations into this this very issue. Um I'm wondering. Somebody's scared is the short answer. Yeah, I, I guess. But yeah, but I guess because they are scared, and it is often social media that is used to spread that fear or to impose that fear. You'll get cancelled on social media, and it's an interesting juxtaposition. At present, Russell Brand uh, and police. There has been a complaint laid with police after 20 years, and we must note that an official investigation, therefore, is now underway. But Russell Brand has largely lost Indeed. his livelihood. Now, I have no brief for Russell Brand. In fact, I would, de I would say he's not my kind of guy. Um, isn't that an example of the power that is wielded in an unreasonable world and why people are, are scared of standing up? I'm not sure. Bits of it, yes. I mean, the the main show on Russell Brand has been old-fashioned investigative journalism by a paper, or actually by two TV stations. And I mean, that's always happened. That's always been the way that some wrongdoing, mm. alleged wrong, wrongdoing, obviously, at this point, has come to light. That's what happened with Jimmy Savile, yeah. the children's entertainer. What happened with Kevin Spacey, before. too. But what, I, what I've been really... Yes, and what I've been really shocked about, though, with Russell Brand is that an MP, a, a UK MP, um, someone who's in the, the Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee, which would be the one that oversees mm. TVs, uh, TV licensing and TV broadcasting, it's written to social media platforms asking them to demonetise Russell Brand, and that strikes me as... So we have the government, before a man's been do. convicted, had due process, yes. we have had a government MP saying, we want you to cancel this guy. I saw this, this this letter yesterday, yeah. We also have in New Zealand... Yeah, uh, and, and, and take his money away. And take his money away. We also have in New Zealand, um, operating outside the normal scrutinies of government department, we have clearly and self-declared Marxist academics creating entities through government-backed charities. We've got a thing called the Disinformation Project, We've got fact, Aotearoa. Indeed, our supposedly independent um, internet kind of watchdog. Um, and they are spending millions of taxpayers' dollars, which is hidden through charitable grants and donations from government, to create organisations which supposedly are fact-checking and calling out disinformation, which are, in fact, on any assessment, running political campaigns and they're running them against people like uh, Kelly J. Keane. They're running them against the vaccine hesitant and those who are against mandates in this country. And they are very clearly political activists. Is this a common thread in Western democracies? I don't know if you come across Michael Schellenberger, who yeah, yeah. Um, did a, an independent run for governor in California, I think last year, the year before, whenever it was. 
and he calls it the censorship industrial con con complex and it's this weird mixture of NGOs, charities, left-wing academics and some government agencies that between them do things that look very legitimate that are about fact checking and so on and um, that recommend that social media platforms use their power to um, suppress people to make their links harder to find you know to shadow ban them in in the, yeah, in the term yeah. that's sometimes used all all meant to be about stopping disinformation and misinformation and maybe you know russian propaganda or whatever yeah. and then you look and you think well are any of you people saying there are only two sexes yeah. because that's my bottom line at the moment for anyone who says that they're telling the truth oh, if but you there are lots of genders there are aren't there yeah. then you're not a truth teller but there are a lot of genders no, aren't there no, no, no. i no, either gender is the same as sex or it just means yeah. nothing. Like, I saw no, a great sign else. at the Toronto March that said, if genitalia doesn't define sex, why do you need to chop your willy off to become a woman? Which I thought was... Yeah, very good question, isn't know, it? Bang on the money. Where are you talking to us from, Helen? You in uh, Ireland or, or England? I'm in the UK. Okay, well, in the UK. We're in the UK. Or is that a secret location? Oh, sorry, Cambridge. Cambridge, all Cambridge. right. Okay. <laughs> I also wanted to ask you, just by the by, any relation to the great Joyce family of Ireland, the writer? No, although my dad's name is James Joyce, but that was because his <laughs> mum always wanted to call her son James and then married a man called Joyce. Oh, that's a genuine... Um, I'll tell you, there's a, there's a, I am from a famous Joyce family, though, of cricketers. Oh, so yes, I saw Isabel your... Like, all your kids in play Australia. international cricket, the, the boys and the girls. It's amazing. All my siblings. I, I'm siblings, not my sorry, your siblings. Yeah. <laughs> um, all yeah. right, I just wanted, wanted to clear that up. So we have... So we are being gaslit um, by our media in New Zealand to a huge extent and by ma our major political parties who are scared of, of, of cancel culture and this appears to be happening around the world in Western democracies. This is not an imagining. Uh, it is a real thing and the culture war is, is real. Um, my next question then is who is winning it? I get the feeling maybe in New Zealand, maybe because of what happened... Wednesday here, um, I get the feeling the tide is turning a little. I would say that um, reality does tend to win out in the end. It's just that in the end can be an awfully long time and an awful lot of people are harmed in the meantime. So the longer this goes on, the worse it's going to be. The more children will have been misled, the more children will be sterilised, the more women will have been harmed by losing, you know, sporting competitions or access to women-only spaces, the greater the disconnect between the elite classes of politicians and media and academics and ordinary people who just get very cross about all of this sort of stuff. But it just has to come crashing down because it's so fundamentally stupid. Like hardly anyone moves from a position of recognising that there are two sexes and that matters to thinking that trans rights, you know, what they call trans rights, namely mm. lying about sex, is, is good. Mm. Lots of people move the other direction. It's one of those things that the more you know about this, the less you like it, which is very unlike actual civil liberties movements. Like in general, the more you know gay people or people of different races or nationalities, the more you like them and the less you worry about that. This is different. The more you realise what's happening, the more angry you get. Yeah. So it's moving that direction, but it's slow. I, I want to make a couple of ob observations. Um, I can remember as a kid reading National Geographic or World of Wonder magazine and there were, when I look back, quite horrifying, horrifying pictures of, of, of customs in other countries, foot binding in Asiatic countries, right? That weird thing in Africa where they'd stretch women's necks with, um, with brass hoops around them. And, and I think, looking back, those were barbaric practices. Yet we seem to accept that in some, some cases, the state-funded genital mutilation of people with some issues is acceptable, irreversible mutilation of their sexual organs in their body, often through state-funded surgery. How did we get there? And I really wonder for those who promote this and get angry about it, what is it that they are trying to achieve? I mean, we've been here before with medicine, with lobotomies. I mean, I don't know if you know the guy who invented the lobotomy actually got a Nobel Prize for it. 
And then the guy who popularized the quick way of doing it, which is through the eye socket, you just stick something in and twist it, which was easier than the thing you did before. I mean, he just went in like this circus from hosp mental hospital to mental hospital, like doing dozens of people at a time. And it went on for years after people started to say, this isn't doing anyone any good and whistleblowers were trying to stop him and the rest. But both of those people went on to the end of their lives, believing that what they did had helped because the alternative is to accept that you have done horrific harm and people don't like to accept that. So these doctors, I mean, some of them, I'm sure they're well motivated. I think some of them just want the money because there's a lot of money in this. But once you've started, you can't then very easily say, oh, you know, I was wrong. It's not the case that some children are born trans. Like children are just confused about lots of things and sometimes miserable. And sometimes that comes out in what they say about their sex. That's the truth of it. And if you sterilize them, this is not going to help. Like there's no evidence that the sorts of surgeries they do help and lots of evidence that it harms them. But once you've done those surgeries, how can you ever admit the horrific nature of what it is that you've done? So those people just dig in. Like they're just, they're, 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 they're resistant to any truth telling. All right. As we mentioned at the start, their tactic to those who oppose their, just to be honest, crazy cult-like behaviour, I'm just going to call it for what I see it, their comeback yeah, it is. is often, you are you are right-wing, you're Nazis, you're white supremacists, this is part, it's all about your politics in, you know, a classic left-right uh, political uh, spectrum or, or, or context. Equally, I must say, often people come back against the trans advocates, the cultists, and say you're all Marxists or communists. Are either of those criticisms valid, do you think? I mean, there's no denying that this um, this ideology or this cult-like belief system is supported in specifically in America by the Democrats and not really the Republicans. Mm. So if you look at the world as defined by America, yeah. it's it's a liberal as in Democrat American ideology. Yeah. And it does seem to be something that being religious helps people to stand up to. I'm not religious myself, and that's not why yeah. I stand up it's against right. this. I don't think I need an excuse to say don't sterilize children. But people who are um, religious often have quite strong feelings of sacredness about the way mm. that humanity was made. I can also be a complete pain up the arse, Helen, to be frank when they say this is God's will. <laughs> but, I mean, at least they stand up to this. Yeah, yeah. But you can stand up to this with rational thought. It's just as powerful, and I see... I you. completely agree. But, yeah. you know... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's one of the things they do is they say, oh, religious people agree with you, therefore you must be religious. Yeah. I mean, one of the things they often say about people like me in the UK is that we're funded by far-right American money. I can tell you I've never seen a dollar of it. Like, it's a joke among the women I know. People yeah. say, have you got your check? Have you got your far-right check yet? You know, have the Republicans written you yeah. a check? And I've no. got to admit, here at the no, platform, we've been running almost two years, Helen, and when I set this up, because um, I couldn't get a job in the mainstream, I said I need to find someone with a bit of money to do it, it's not cheap. But I chose to, I had to find someone who was in New Zealand, based in New Zealand, and was prepared to publicly say they were doing it. So we were above board. There are a number of other alt media, I suppose alt media organisations who won't say where their funding comes, and it lays them open to that criticism. I want to know, I want to ask you this quickly too, because uh, I could talk all morning to you. Part of the trans movement is co-opted into other trends, and our former Prime Minister, Helen, uh, Jacinda Ardern, is very much part of this. Um, and that is that you use a fear of something to create new controls, and particularly free speech and hate speech laws are being promulgated here, and our former Prime Minister is part of a Christchurch call thing. So our government miss identified deliberately the mosque massacre in Christchurch as a terror attack. It was a lone wolf gunman, not connected to any organised terror group who had clear mental issues, though not enough under the law to give him, get him committed. We made that a terror attack and we've used that as an excuse to suggest that we need much more control over people on Facebook. We are now using, it would seem to me, the new trend is AI will destroy our society we must control what people can do on the internet. And um, Jacinda Ardern is heavily into that. That's your new job, basically. Is the trend, transgender movement part of, in your opinion, of a wider anti-freedom, or if you like, you know, the line between fascism and communism is pretty close, 
Is it aligned with all those other trends? And I'd say disturbing trends that we are seeing. Absolutely. I mean, one reason is because there is no truth or reality, physical reality to it. It's just words. So the only sense in which a man who says he's a woman is a woman is that he says it. And so if you want other people to go along with it, you have to force them to say it too. And you have to stop them from saying what I just said, which is that he's still a man. So it's a super linguistic movement and that immediately leads you to wanting to control speech and calling it hate to speak truth. So a woman who says a man who comes into women's bathrooms and toilets is intruding on women's spaces, that's a woman who's committing hate if the man identifies as a woman. So you straight away get yourself into, you know, controls on speech, calling it hate, passing laws, like there's a law that's um, on, it's, it's going through the system in Ireland and another one that's going to start in Scotland next year. Both of them are anti-hate speech laws, that's what they say. And they, they not, explicitly they include laws. gender. They're censorship laws, but they specifically say gender identity is one of the things that's protected. Yeah, and we have had this too, and to that is to be protected by certain anti-discrimination laws. You essentially have to be of an identified vulnerable group. So, in fact, the protections of this legislation are not applied universally to, to everyone. And I hate to say it, white, old, cis males like me, we never, we never qualify as a minority group. You can say what you like about us. Well, it turns out that women don't even either. Yeah, that's you know, right. I'm no better off than you are. Like, yeah. It's going to be women who are got first, for We're sure. All We're all evil, post-colonial homophobes. That's our problem. Um, Helen, I could talk to you. I mean, I am your... post-colonial. I'm Irish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I go back to, I, I am actually uh, a distant relation to the Blessed Oliver, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> Helen, it has been an absolutely fascinating and a most enjoyable conversation. And just to hear someone... Telling it like it is and not getting shouted. How? Oh, we can delay the to. news a bit. We've we got, got another to. minute. I need to ask you, Helen, how do you survive? Because you're just such a prime candidate to have the bejesus kicked out of you by, by you, your opponents. How come you're still smiling? How I'm come not, you've still got a job? I, I'm not. Um I'm not economically vulnerable. I work for Sex Matters, which is an organisation that fights this. I have my own newsletter. I have the royalties for my book. And so I'm not I'm not beholden to anyone who could get me sacked. But also, I talk to people who talk sense all the time. Honestly, it's gaslighting and it'll make us all go mad unless we talk in reality-based language to other people who talk in reality-based language, which is what you and I have just done. Helen, thank you so much. Um, I'll let you get... It must be, must be late. Uh, I'll let you get to bed now. Um, let's hope we can talk in the future. Real pleasure. Indeed, thank you. Helen Joyce, uh, there.